So, who are you? I'm Joe Armstrong. Joe Armstrong. Yeah, and uh, what do you do? What do I do? Uh, I keynote the future of the craft in my books. <laughs> okay, what book? Yeah, uh, uh, Programming Out. Recommend the Press. Okay. Oh, and why were you qualified to write uh, for a I made the first airline system. Right. Okay, was that, was that you or were you in a team that did uh, it? In your well, I started it and then it became a team later. Right. But, uh, so I did the original work and then that kind of grew into a programming hack. Okay, so that was 1986? Yeah. Right, okay. And you were at Ericsson? Yes. Okay, yeah. excellent. And, and has it progressed as you, as you thought it would? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I ever thought it would. I didn't have a model of how it would progress. I mean, it, this is a sort of total amazement to me that there are all these people using it. I mean, I'm at the first conference where people pay money to listen to sessions all about it. All day they're talking about it and nothing else, which is very, very cool. I mean, we have had conferences before, but not commercial conferences where you charge. I mean, that's a kind of radical change. And that's. Uh, I think we've probably been very conservative there because you know the first Ruby conference had 30 people. And I thought to Chad Fowler, and he said, uh, you know, we've got like 100 people who are going to pay. You know, do, do you think that's about right? Well, of course, you know, we did it with 30, you know, and we've got 5,000 people coming out, or 500 people. Coming out. After a while, no, not 5,000, 500. And, uh, and then they did the Ruby on Rails stuff. O'Reilly, I think, were involved in the organisation. Suddenly, thousands of people come. So, you know, just kind of wondering what the Dialing on rails is going to be, and I think I think today there's a peer-to-peer -peer system. I think that's the sort of that's the kind of dialing on rails. Right. I mean, it's, it's not a web application. It's a peer-to-peer -peer system. <laughs> you were saying yesterday that you felt it was almost an advantage that it didn't take off quite so quickly because yeah. it meant you could do yes. radical changes to, yes. to to improve it quickly. So I mean, it had a long 10, 15-year period where we didn't really have many users, so we could change things because. Once you've got hundreds of thousands and millions of users, you can't change things. And, uh, so if we now expand into large numbers of users, um, we won't be able to change things. But that's okay because we've we've learned our, our lessons, so we're fairly happy to uh, we're fairly convinced that what we have doesn't need a lot of changes. Right. It's pretty well battle tested. Okay. So if, so if it does change, it's almost like a layer of abstraction just to make it like an interface. I think it'll here. change in the libraries. It, it, you know, more libraries. And, uh, you won't change the language. Uh, that's pretty stable. Right. Okay. And uh, and what is it about uh, concurrent programming that's important these days? Uh, I think concurrent programming has kind of, kind of got a reputation as being difficult. But um, that difficulty is, is due to the things that are in the system, not not the intrinsic difficulty in the problem itself. Often the problem is relatively simple. Um, it's all the non-functional things of the problem that make it difficult. So if you if you say, well, solve the problem, that's easy. Um, but make it scalable and fault tolerant and distributable, that's difficult. And, and you would like that bit to be generic and solved in the platform for you, so that you can just concentrate on, on, the, uh, on the problem itself. But a lot of applications, if, uh, there's, there's no easy pathway to make your application scalable, but there is an easy pathway in LA. And it's designed for scalable torrents. That's what it's good at. If you want to make a scalable fault torrent system, do it in Erlang because it's easy. And now it happens to, to go very well on multiprocessors and multiple machines. It will just go faster if it's if it's been if it's been written for scalability. Then that will mean all the processes are independent. If they're all independent, they map nicely on, on the multicores. So we actually know how to do multiple systems. Which, and I think that's one of the reasons it's attracting interest. It's not the only reason. The, the other reason I think um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, there are a lot of new ideas now. I mean, there's the Haskell and the Camel and the R language, functional languages, and they kind of they offer a different way of thinking about the world and, and a way that is is uh, good for a lot of problems. You have less problems with the code, much more free use of it. And I think there's also a disillusionment with a lot of old technology programming techniques. So it's a combination of factors.